Welcome okay. back today to another episode of Merit Outdoors and Prospecting. Well, today it is rainy and nasty outside. There ain't going to be no good fishing today, and I don't feel like getting cold and wet. So, instead, we're going to switch over to the prospecting part of the channel, and we're going to do some gold pay dirt today. So today we have Arcs Gold Pay Dirt. It's arcsgold1 at gmail.com or arcsgold.com. Now, this is the half gram guaranteed bag of pay dirt. Um, it's one pound, and one out of every ten bags, they say they put a nugget in. But we all know how pay dirt goes with nuggets. They're usually not nuggets. They're little flakes or pickers. So, we're going to go ahead and open this bag up. We're going to stick it in my gold pan we got here. And we're going to check for magnetite, and we're going to see what we got. And then we're going to go ahead and pan it out and see what type of gold we get today. Um, to do any type of pay dirt, a uh, couple of gold pans are good to have. I got a 10-inch and an 8-inch. The 8-inch I don't usually pan with. It's a little small. The 10-inch is a little better, so it's uh, they're both small. They're easy to put in a backpack, take prospecting on the creek. We also have a magnet. Check for magnetite and any type of ironstone that's in there to see how difficult it's going to be. And then we got a little scoop shovel here so that we can scoop our gold out. And we got a snuffer bottle. Snuffer bottles are great to have because you can suck up all that little gold and you can keep panning as you go. So let's get right into it and see what we got. And of course, I'm doing this inside because it's raining outside. They got a nice uh, vacuum sealed Ziploc bag here. So that's good. No spillage. Uh, usually I classify this down, but I'm not digging my classifiers out of the shed right now. It's been winter time, so I have most of my prospecting equipment put up. Let me just go ahead and we'll see what we got in here. I'll wash this out at the end and we'll pan it just to make sure we didn't miss any fine gold. So let's go ahead and uh, check our magnify magnification here, see what type of iron. Oh yeah, there's quite a little bit of magnetite in here. So yeah, there you go. See, it's got some pretty good magnetite. Not bad. And most of the time you can pull this magnetite out and you don't have to worry about getting any gold because uh, when it's not wet, the gold doesn't stick to the iron still. But if this was wet and we classified it wet, then we would have to, any magnetite we pull out, we have to put it in a separate pan and we'd have to pan it out as well because gold will stick to wet ironstone and wet magnetite. So we're just going to pour that back in. We're going to go ahead and pan it the way it is. And we got water over here. We're going to go ahead and put some Dawn dishwashing soap in. You can do, use Dawn dishwashing soap or you can use Jet Dry. All it is is a water surfactant so that it breaks the water tension. That way there's no oil because flower gold and fine gold will float in water if you're not careful. So we're going to go ahead and just put in a couple of drops of this. Just like that. Break the water tension up. Now we're ready to pan. So we're going to use the 10 inch pan. And we're just going to do oh, a little scoop at a time here, just because I haven't classified it. Now with this setup, I have the large riffles on this side, and I have the fine riffles on this side. Um, the whole reason for the gold pan is that way, whenever you sit here and shake it in the water, you stratify it like this. It gets all the heavies to the bottom of the gold pan. All the gold will stick around the edge, and as you go to pan it out it pulls the looser gravels and rocks off the top and your gold and your black sands will stick behind these ridges that way you keep your gold in your pan so we're going to go ahead and stratify it down real good just like that we're going to start panning her out i usually stratify it do a couple pans there stratify it back down Do a couple more and just keep using that process back and forth. You want to keep stratifying it that way if any gold or black sand gets in these riffles, it pulls it back down and it sits along the bottom edge of that pan right there. We're just going to use the big riffles on this one. Just because we got some larger gravels in there. Now, it is important when you're doing any gold dirt that you use a catch basin and that you 
go back over your dirt several times, not just once, because you will miss gold pay dirt. I've missed gold inside there and gone back and panned it two or three times later and found more gold in the pay dirt. So you can be a professional and get 90%, but that 10% of gold is still there. We'll get her down to the black sands and the heavies at the bottom once we get some of this gravel and blonde sands off. Getting closer now. Say about one more time and we'll start the pullback here and see what we got for gold. I can already see black sand starting to show up in the bottom of my pan around the sides here. And that's good. We just want to try to get the blondes off, but that black sand is really what we're looking for right down there. That's where all your gold's going to be hiding. And gold is heavy, lead is heavy, iron is heavy, so it all sticks to the same. When you're prospecting on a creek, if you're finding bullet shells and lead and nails, you're usually in the right spot if you got black sand because everything heavy will come there. All right, so now we're going to go ahead, put a little water in here, and we're going to pull it back, and we're going to see what this little scoop of uh, little scoop of pay dirt here gives us the gold. So when you pull it back, you want to put the water to the top of the pan, and you want to slowly pull back what's left over there. Now your gold is heavy, so it's going to sit in the pan. I already see some flakes showing up here. Pull these larger rocks back here. We'll give it a tap. Keep the gold at the top. Oh yeah, we got a nice pan here. All right, so as you can see, as I'm pulling back, our black sands are what's left over. And you see all the gold flake in here. All the gold that's in there in the black sands. And these heavier iron stones right here, we can push them out of the way. That's fine. Just heavy ironstone, that's some of the magnetized iron, but you can see we got gold there. So I'll see if I can do this left-handed. So then I just sit here, and I keep rolling the black sand back. And now we're getting some good gold. My daughter Riley here is trying to help me. Alright, so what we're going to do, I'm going to take a snuffer bottle. We're going to move this gold back to the top. And we're going to snuffer it up. All right, I think we got it all there. I'll pan it back one more time just to make sure we didn't miss any gold on that one. Hold on there, Riley. Yeah, you can see, I missed some gold right here. You guys give me just a minute. I'm going to change my lighting in the room real quick so you can see this a lot better. So just hold on one second. All right, so sorry about that. I had to change some lighting here so you guys can see a little easier. So yeah, we got the gold out of there, but what I was gonna show you is when you pan back, you see how you get that black sand in there? You got a lot of garnets, black sand, stuff like that. That's your ironstone. That's where your gold likes to hide when you're prospecting rivers and creeks. And here later on in the summer, whenever it gets a little warmer out, we will actually go out and I'll show you what to prospect and what to look for in old gravel bars, ancient channels, things like that, how to look through bedrock. Um, here in Nebraska, there's a few spots where we still have bedrock on the rivers and like the South Platte, but you got to go more towards Wyoming. But we will be taking trips down to Colorado this year and going down to some of their free panning sites down there on some of the old dredge piles from back in the 50s. And that is really fun. We'll be using river sluice boxes and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get another scoop in here and let's see what else we got. Like I said, when you're not classifying it, it's better to do a little bit at a time because you will miss gold. I had to go back and I picked two smaller pieces up in that last one that I panned back. So then you sit here, get it all classified, get it all shaken down, stirred real good. 
stratified is the technical term, but I like using stirred. I'm a redneck, so, you know. Once we got it all down in the concentration of the middle of the pan here, we're going to use the large riffles and we're going to pan it off again. And these larger gravels are light, a lot lighter than gold and iron. It's in metal, so they come right off just like that. You can have very fine gold and you can have giant boulders the size of your hand. You can classify it down in the water and when you pan it out, all those big rocks are going to come off. But even that fine flower gold will still stick to the bottom of the pan because it is very heavy. And like I do, I dip it two or three times and I turn around and I stratify it again. Get everything back down in the small corner there on the bottom, underneath the first riffle. And then I pull it back off again. At this point in time, all the gold is sitting down below that first riffle. So you don't really have to worry about it coming out. Your black sands and your gold, like I said, stays at the bottom. Got some bigger rocks in there, but get rid of them. We don't need them. Starting to see some black sands show up here. We'll take off a little bit more and then we'll pull it back and see what we got. Do this one more time. All right. All right, so now we're going to pull it back again. You really only need as much water in your pan as what you have for material when you're pulling back. So I might have a little extra water in here that I don't need. But that's all right. You can already see we got some gold popping up there in that corner. And it looks like there must be a nice little picker right there that's about to pop up. Possibly one right there. So this looks like this would be a pretty decent pan of gold. I see some larger pieces in here. Oh yeah, those are some pretty pieces there. Those won't even fit in my snuffer bottle. So move these two rocks out of the way right here. Give it a tap. Pull the gold back towards the top. Now, those are some nice pieces of gold. That's a picker there. That's a chunk. Hear that? That's good right there. We like that. That's good weight in gold. Yeah. I enjoy that. So we'll push these back up. Grab these with our snuffer. don't think that piece will suck up but we will try oh we made it all right so yeah as you can see we got some gold already showing up in the snuffer bottle and when we get done we'll throw it all in the pan and take a look at that So I'm just going to go ahead and pan it back one more time just to make sure I didn't miss anything. And that pan looks good. I don't see anything that we missed in there. So we should be right there. Go ahead and get us another scoop. just a little bit more in this scoop I think that one big piece got stuck in my snuffer yeah it did. we'll get that out all right so let's go ahead stratify this down 
Make sure you loosen it up so there's no dirt, any floating gold stuck in there. You want everything nice and loose. Stratify down the corner. We'll start panning it back out. Now you can pan a lot slower than I do. I'm trying to pan somewhat slow for you, but I'm I'm a fairly fast panner when it comes to, to panning off larger gravels. I have enough faith in my panning skills. I know I'm not losing anything extreme. I do always check it again, but most of the time it's only a couple of small, small flakes that I miss. out of there that's the nice thing about classifying is you can do all your plus 10 rocks the quarter inch first get them out of the way most of the time there's not any big nuggets in bags like this and then if you have anything smaller you just pan it out in one it's a lot easier Starting to get down to some black sands here. Just one more time, take some more of this blonde sand off. All right. All right, now we're going to stratify it back. Mm, got some nice gold in here, too. I just sit there and pull the black sands back and there's the gold just like that you can see you got some nice gold in here so get that snuffered up bring it to the top nice chunky piece there there we go All right, so we're gonna pull that back one more time, just real quick. Make sure I didn't miss any fine flower gold. Usually the flower gold's the naturally occurring gold that you find. It's not often that you buy a pay dirt that's classified and actually been through, or being seeded is what I call it, and find larger chunks of gold they didn't know were there. But you can find flower gold if you watch, and most of that's natural occurring gold in the dirt already. We look good on that pan. Some more in here. We'll do a little bit more this time. All right. Just try to spy this really good since we got a little more material here. And this uh, pay dirt really isn't that dirty. There's not a whole lot of uh, sticks or leaves or anything like that in here. A lot of times you'll get it that'll just muck your water up real bad. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a little more difficult pay dirt to do. But that just tells me this pay dirt has already been washed at one time. So this is probably probably used concentrates off of a sluice box or um, some river gravels that have been washed real good. There's a lot of round gravels in here so it does look like river material. larger rocks like that that we don't need but you got a lot of these river gravels in here and these are just real smooth rocks from being tumbled down rivers over and over so it is good that the, the material actually comes out of what could be a mine now there's no guarantee with pay dirts that's why I always try to buy pay dirts that guarantee a, a set amount of gold in them I paid $48 for this one and it's a half gram of gold guaranteed. Gold's about $70 a gram right now. So 
I won't make all my money back, but if I do get the half gram of gold back, um, basically paying 20 bucks to have fun and get to actually pan some pay dirt from a gold mine and get real gold nuggets and flakes and pickers. And, and that's, that's just worth it at all. It's something fun to do, um, especially right now with COVID and, and quarantine and it's raining and cold outside. You just sit down and pan some pay dirt out, have some fun. It's fun for the family and everyone else. It's great gift ideas. So, you know, um, I would check out Gold Bay. And um, Dave over at Gold Bay out of Colorado has the some of the best prices on gold pay dirt. You can buy as 103, 103% ROI, which means return on investment on spot price. So if you're paying for a $60 bag of gold, you're getting $60 worth of gold out of it. So you're actually getting your money. Now, don't invest in pay dirt as a way to make money. If you're going to do that, invest in bullion, gold bullion. So at least when you're buying gold, you know what you're getting. You're paying for your money worth. But pay dirt is fun. And so I would check out Gold Bay. I'd also check out Lynch Mining Incorporation. They're really good out of Arizona. They're great um, with pay dirt. Their Bentley bag, the Diablos bag, some of those are really good. You're not going to get as high as an ROI as you would with Gold Bay, being anywhere from 90 to 100%, but you will get about a 60 to 70% ROI. And they do sell some bigger buckets. So if you want to spend more money, you can get bigger nuggets. Alright, now we're getting down here. Down to our blondes and our blacks. So we're going to go ahead and stop there. And we're going to pan this back. Oh, wow. There's a nice big piece in this one, guys. Oh, she slid down the pan. She's so big. Boy, listen, listen to this one. That's a nice piece of gold there. Look at that piece of gold. That's a nice piece. That's a chunker there. We'll go ahead and get our snuffer bottle. Drop my bottle. Now I know this one's not going to fit in the tube, so we're going to have to open it up and put it in there. That's a little big of a picker to fit in that too, but that's a nice piece of gold. That's a very nice piece of gold. So go ahead and drop that one in. Clunk. Alright. Like I said, I'm going to double check it real quick. Pan it back again just in case I miss some fine gold here. And there you go. I did miss one piece of gold that I see so far. That's why it's always good to double check. Always pan it back twice because you'll end up missing nice little pieces like that. And that's a nice little chunk of gold. So you don't want to miss that stuff. I'll go ahead and snuff that up. Boy, listen to that. Don't that sound good? Gotta love it when you got gold rattling. All right, we'll go ahead and do this last pan. And then we'll pour the snuffer bottle out, clean it up, and show you what we got and all. All right, here we go. Let's hope for another nice piece like that. Those are almost nuggets. Good pickers is what we call those. Some people call those nuggets depending on where they're from and how big their gold is. If you're in Wisconsin or Michigan or even some places in Colorado, you don't find anything but a lot of small flood gold. So something like that might be considered a nugget. But I consider a nugget two grams and more. We'll get her stratified down. Start panning her back.
Need that big rock in there. Unless it's gold, I don't want it in my pan. All right, we're getting close. Blondes are almost out of here. Almost down to straight black sand here. Let's go ahead and pull it back and see what we have here. I'm right handed so I usually pull it back with the right hand but you can see I already got some gold right there. I'm trying to pop out on me. So we'll rotate the other way. A little more difficult to do backwards but you can see the gold popping out here all right so we'll go ahead and snuffer this up see that there's some of that really fine micro gold right there now that right there is naturally occurring gold that's um that's gold that comes out of the mine itself and out of the ground so we'll go ahead and get that because i like fine gold too and i know i missed a piece over here So now, I'm going to go ahead, pull it back one more time forward. That way I can do it the right way. And uh, if I miss anything here, I'll let you know. And sure enough, I sure did. Yep, one more piece there, and actually a nice piece too. Another piece of gold right there. So we'll go ahead and pull that up. All right, sounds pretty good. We're going to have to take a look and see what we got. So now we'll empty this pan out. Empty this snuffer bottle out. Oh, it looks like some good flash in the pan to me. So we'll get it all down in one corner here, and then we'll spread it out and show you guys. So there you have it, some nice gold, really nice gold. Some bigger pieces in here, comparison to my finger, that's not bad for gold pieces, that's pretty nice. So hopefully this has been an interesting episode. It's not real long, I know that. Um, I will have some more in some bigger bags of pay dirt that we will be doing in the future um, with more gold.
but I just figured I'd show you what a half gram of bag looks like. Now, Arcs is on eBay, and he is one of the few eBay sellers that does give a guaranteed minimum, and I can tell you right now, um, there's at least a half gram of gold here, if not just a little bit more. There are some pretty nice pieces in there, and gold is heavy. So, I don't have my scales out right now. I have them packed away, um, so I might get them out later and make a thumbnail clip of what the weight came out to but i'm telling you we got we got our half gram for sure there's some nice pieces in here some really nice pickers and it's really nice gold it's all real that's what we're looking for so if you guys have any questions about pay dirts or if you have any requests on pay dirts you've seen online that you want me to try um just send me a comment below this mo or this video and I will try those pay dirts out. I will buy them and we will see what we get out of them. Um, reviews are really good. If you want to see somebody that has really good reviews, go to MillerProspecting.com and uh, or Miller Prospecting on YouTube. And he does pay dirt reviews of every type of pay dirt you can imagine. Um, and really educational guys. One of the, the Dylan is one of the one people that I watched more than anyone else on YouTube. And that's where I learned how to do a lot of my prospecting videos. You've also got KleshGuitar.com, where Klesh is gold. Um, he's out of Colorado from Denver. He does a lot of gold painting down and around the United States, where there's different gold areas and belts that are rich that you can actually go to and pan for free without having to have a license or own the land. And then you also have Flower Gold Wizards out of Wisconsin. And he's great for small flower gold. He does nothing but panning out of the creeks. Um, not a lot of pay dirt reviews, but he shows you a lot about prospecting and what to look for. So check them out too. I appreciate you. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button. Hit notifications and leave me a comment below if you want to know anything else. Have a great day.